Hallelujah. The Bible says, He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for this investment of prayer and we thank you for the mighty things that you will be doing in the midst of your people. To you be all the glory. And for tonight, we ask that you will visit us afresh. In the name of Jesus, let there be the hearing of faith and the working of miracles. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Welcome to church in the name of Jesus Christ. That also means welcome to the next level of your destiny. It also means welcome to the next spiritual dimension for you. Because my Bible declares that they go from strength to strength. As many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Hallelujah. It is a good thing to come to the house of God because the house of God is Bethel, the place of bread where we are able to feast upon the light of his word. And when the light comes, it sustains the capacity to dislodge darkness. John 1, 5 says, and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. So I welcome everyone, our Zaria family connecting and our global family. Welcome to this experience in the name of Jesus. Let me appreciate a dear man of God all the way from Canada, Pastor Andrew Bauer. God bless you. Such a great joy. Thank you. Thank you so, so very much. Hallelujah. Your life must produce results. Please shout a believing amen. amen. It is my prayer, it is my goal and my intention that your Christian experience becomes so rich that your life produces such extraordinary results that it becomes impossible to confuse that this one is the hand of God. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, I and the children that the Lord has given me, he says, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Do you believe that? The believer's experience will remain a burdensome experience full of pain and frustration until you have access to light. This is very important. I have told you and I will continue to pound it upon your spirit that until and unless you have access to light there is no basis for victory in this kingdom victory in this kingdom is not based on sentiments victory in this kingdom is not based on some kind of um you know vain imaginations it is a product of access to light may you find light tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to charge our hearts very strongly tonight, hoping that tonight's teaching will be a strong contribution as far as our attaining stature and commanding results are concerned. I have told you that God desires, please let me have your attention now, God desires for the believer in Christ to have a productive Christian life. Are we together? Yes. Second only to knowing the Lord, scripture demands that if you are a believer indeed, your life must be able to command such dimension of extraordinary results. Because like you have been taught here, your results matter to God and your results matter to the project kingdom come. It is impossible to establish his purposes when your life is void of authentic results. This is important. John 15 and verse 8, the Bible says, Herein is our Father glorified. 
John 15, 8. Here is, is our Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, he says, so shall ye be my disciples. John 15, 16. It says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Hallelujah. God desires that we bear fruit. It says, so let your light so shine before men. Matthew chapter 5 uh, and then verse 16. It says, let your light so shine before men that they may see. He wants them to see. They may see your good works, the extraordinary results that come out of and from your Christian experience. Look up. The greatest way to market a product is truth. You have no fear if what you are proposing is the truth. When you are marketing a product, a gadget, or some kind of thing, if you know that you are exaggerating what you claim that product can achieve, you will be afraid of someone discovering the truth. But your confidence is based on the truthfulness of what you are proposing. Are we still together? Believers chicken out and they lack confidence because they themselves are not yet sure. They are not yet sure of all the things that we claim that God is and all the things that we claim God is able to do. The apostle said, but I know whom I have believed. He says, and I am persuaded. Persuaded. Hallelujah. And so your results matter. You must come to that recognition that God desires that consistently from your life there be an unending effulgence of the supernatural manifestations of the possibilities of the kingdom. This is not an exclusive preserve for preachers. It is the heritage of every believer in Christ. Most people are not trained in church, so they do not know. And when you do not know, you cannot have expectation. You learned that last week. Are we together now? It is important for you to know that you are on, if it is true that you are part of this kingdom come project, your life must command results. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that my life will produce extraordinary results one more time say in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that my life must command extraordinary results what manner of man is this they said that even the winds and the waves obey him jesus called their attention not by calling them he called their attention by allowing for a spectacular display there was such a manifestation of God in a man. Until then, their only consolation were prophecies of prophets and happenings before their arrival. They were full of stories of things God did. I hope you know theologically speaking that from Malachi to Matthew was about a period of 400 years. It was called a dark face in the history of the church. They never encountered God. They were completely alienated. No prophets nothing that was a, a semblance of god people were allowed to shadow box their way that's why when jesus came and went to the temple they had turned the temple to a place of business because there was no power there was no light so instead of wasting the building they turned it into a marketplace and jesus made a scourge and threw them out and said have you not read that this house you see that you have turned it into a business enterprise Huh? that it shall be a house of prayer for all nations in other words the possibilities of god should tabernacle within this place i forbid you from living a fruitless christian life i forbid you from living a barren christian life where people consistently have to keep questioning is it true that is the god of heaven you serve is it true that is the god of heaven no 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 even if you serve the devil eventually there will be a semblance of results at least janice and jambas had the ability to turn a serpent a stick to a serpent i reject a powerless generation 
in the name of Jesus. Listen, let me tell you this. Results are very important for two reasons. Number one, they act as consolations to your Christian experience. You have been taught that our pursuit uh, for God and for spiritual things is not all about results. Our ultimate pursuit is to know him like Paul said, but, but, that in the dealings of God with man, there is a very unique consolation that results bring to people. You can serve God when you are poor, but you will serve God better when you are blessed. Is that true? You can serve God when you are stagnated in the midst of pain, but you serve God better. You, in fact, you serve God best when you have the liberty to be able to serve him freely. The Bible says, listen, it says, he that told you have asked for nothing. It says, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Imagine the excellency of your spiritual life when you can import the possibilities of God and bring it to your family. Your unbelieving family that has mocked God before your face and then day one, they keep recording like a secretary. Day one, healing. Day two, breakthrough. Day three, deliverance. Day four, speed. Day five, restoration. At the end of it, they'll have to drop their pen and say, who is this God? Are you paying attention now? Yes, sir. Our evangelism is poor and we keep begging and moving around because every witness is not a valid witness until you have an evidence. I have taught you this, that when you go to the court of law, your witness may not be strong until you present an evidence. So Peter was standing before the Jerusalem council making defense of his faith and the man who was crippled was standing next to him. And the people could not dispute that miracle. What evidence do you have that becomes a backing to all your speakings? When you say God is faithful, where is the proof? Not everybody is a spiritual man. The Greeks seek for a sign. Listen, they will come to the well like the woman at the well. They will not come to the well because of Jesus. They will come to the well because of your results. Then when they come to the well, they will encounter Jesus. Now their convictions will now be greater than the results. But that which attracts is the excellency of the workings of God in your life. Look up please. How do you think people get into cultism? Have you ever seen occultists carrying a placard and say today we are on evangelism? Have you seen that happen? But perpetually they keep recruiting people. Why? Because of a semblance of results. Have you seen a herbalist group themselves as a team and say we are going around Abuja or around our villages? In fact, most of the herbalists that cause mayhem are never really seen. And yet their impact cannot be denied because of results. Shout results. Let the devil hear you. Shout results. I'm here to provoke you tonight to shake away every excuse that has kept you down all kinds of explanations listen there are many people whose growth whose salvation is at the mercy of your results that includes your family that includes all those around you your workplace that includes the members of your church the Bible says the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation, not the excuses. Herein is my father glorified when you bear much fruit, when you bear much fruit, that you come from a family where no one has risen and you hear these arrogant demonic people make statements like nobody will rise from your family. You don't need to start jumping. Let your result answer that there is a cause that has tied everybody in that family that nobody will rise no matter where they go to you cannot argue with results and then you send the children of the Habalis to school on your scholarship and tell him this is a token of righteousness Jesus sends rain to the righteous and the unrighteous let your children go to school while we keep hoping for your own repentance Are we together demonic appearances people go to bed in the night and cannot sleep by morning you think they've rested it was a wrestle this time is not Jacob's kind of wrestle wrestle with demons principalities 
and with one decree like Jesus made over the sea peace be still and an age-long calm is restored in your family they will start looking for names to explain the supernatural like pastor like whatever it is and they are right because the Bible says they shall call you ministers of our God listen ladies and gentlemen from this night your life will begin to command extraordinary results I'm prophesying it to someone in the name of Jesus the resurrected King may your life command such phenomenal results listen for as long as your life is not producing results do not rest no it is foolishness to be in a state of rest rest there means with no passion to press when your life has not produced a requisite level of result there is a labor dimension in the kingdom in prayer the labor dimension in the word that you do not rest until there is that establishment poverty all around your family and you fold your arms as if everything is all right is that the will of god Are we together? Arguments day and night because of money. This one steals, blames this one. Husband blames wife and you can come in as an ambassador. No long sermon. I come in the name of the Lord. It says, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And you calm the family down and in a moment, using the tool of economy, you preach a message that is sound and end all these devilish arguments once and for all. Next time you are going to church, they will say, can we come? Does that look to you like Micah chapter 2? It says, it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain and above the hills. Is that true? And it says, nation shall run to it. That they will tell one another, come, let us go to the house of Jacob. It said, for there he will teach us his ways. It's important that our Christian lives stop being inert and passive. No, we are in an active mission revealing Jesus. And if you are really interested in Jesus, this Jesus project cannot happen by folding your arms. So listen, I have given you an orientation in this ministry that when we advocate results, it's not just a mundane search to heal yourself from failure. The project is beyond proving a point that you are not a failure. No, that the program of God is result dependent. Do not downplay the problems that plague men in our world. Nobody will follow you anywhere if your life does not have results. I guarantee you. They may like you because they are related to you. They may console you out of their life. But if you want genuine followership to Jesus, it will be at an instance of results. Again, let me speak to someone. Whatever has made people run away from your Jesus, the version of Jesus you have been presenting that has been sending more people to hell because they cannot see the evidence, the workings of the Spirit, I declare from tonight, begin to command extraordinary results. Please be seated. Moses, Moses that you read in the Bible, watch this. Moses said, do not let us depart from here if your presence will not go with us. Listen very carefully. It says, how shall they know? Please help me honor Reverend Akila. Such a pleasant surprise. Blessings to you, sir. House on the rock, just. Hallelujah. If your life is bankrupt of results, you will only create a basis for debates that will keep planting unbelief. Are we together now? Let me tell you the truth. Forget about what ignorant people say. Results are powerful. Powerful. Let me repeat again. Genuine results. Results of healing. Results of salvation. 
results of favor find a man whose life is an expression of results and I show you where argument comes to an end and end with a full stop when Jesus hung upon the cross he made three interesting statements it is finished and any devil that wants to add a comma to that statement the power of God has been guaranteed to protect that statement it is finished shame is finished disappointment finished years of crying without solution is finished yes you have to believe this There are families coming to church and once you gather yourselves to go to the house of God, here comes the mockers who come in the spirit of Sambalat and Tobias, stopping you from building what God is building and they mock at you and say, at least we are, it's very clear that we do not love Jesus. But you who is a worker in church, you who is passionate are in this season, may my God use your resource to answer many in the name of Jesus Christ. That a family that you thought nothing good will come out of all of a sudden five of them in one month all get noble jobs a family where the three women are barren all of them carrying twins each as a signature that this came from heaven someone who had been left for dead suddenly like Lazarus comes back with power and vitality you tell me that will not preach a message can you preach better than that result i have taught you that results are also evangelists there is a sermon only results can preach please listen to me there is a sermon only results can preach and while the church keeps downplaying the power of genuine results the world keeps using results to bait many away from their passion for god how many people start from church and end up elsewhere because results took them out of God's presence? I believe in results, oh. I do, sir. I do. I do. When Jesus died and rose from the dead, he didn't need to go around saying, I am risen. He said, look at me. He that was dead now is alive. On the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came upon all of them they said this man are drunk with wine and Peter got, and Peter got up cleaned himself and said no this is only in the morning he said but this is that prophet Joel prophesied this this is that hmm. this is that that favor I was talking about this is that that breakthrough I was talking about this is that that speed that God can bring to a man, this is that. Some of you already promised your parents that in their lifetime they will see the faithfulness of God through you. Make sure that prophecy comes to pass. Make sure they do not just pass on like that. They are waiting. You told mama last year that you will not die until you see God for your years of serving the missionaries. And God has kept her alive, except that your result is not yet there. Listen, you can insist that Father from tonight, no more excuses. I begin to contend until my life. Listen, when you are louder than your results, men will hate you. You see, there is, there is, you are not supposed to be louder than your results. In fact, your results should far act, it should, it should um, be an amplifier of your speakings. The challenge with our generation is that the ratio of the genuine results to the things we propose is so wide that the results are so small. Solomon did not need to brag and make noise. The excellency of his results were there. And every king that came, in, including the arrogant queen of Sheba, when she came and went through the entire palace, she said, half of this was not told me. 
that someone will come to your life and know that the anointing is at work but not know the extent until the day they have an opportunity to sit down under the grace of God upon your life they live not intimidated but inspired that a man can be this open for more of God and it will drive men to pray to fast and say Lord I desire more results are evangelists there is a sermon that only authentic results can preach are we together so let me give us a charge tonight it remains my contribution to helping everyone here to produce authentic genuine spiritual results let me capture my charge tonight in a topic i titled the ways of god the ways of god Psalm 103, verse 7. He made known his ways to Moses. His acts, the Bible says, unto the children of Israel. Psalm 25, from verse 4 and 6. This was a cry from David the psalmist. He says, show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy path. Reading to 6, verse 5. He says, lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all day. Verse 6. He says, remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. In Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16, when you read a very powerful rendition there, it says, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein. It says, And ye shall find rest for your souls. So if you need rest, wishing it does not bring you to rest. Blindly desiring rest does not bring you rest the bible says there is a path that you must find he calls it the good way then he says walk therein and you will consequently and inevitably find rest for your souls hallelujah i have taught and you have heard me teach many many times that god is a god of patterns please write it down if you're writing god is a god of patterns God is a God of patterns. What is a pattern? A pattern is a pathway, a methodology, a predefined pathway that leads to a spiritual outcome is called a pattern. And the entire journey of the believer as far as manifesting possibilities is a blend of patterns and the corresponding glories that follow. Listen carefully. So for every dimension of glory that the believer's life should capture and express, there is a spiritual pattern, another word for a mystery, another word for a pathway. There is a spiritual pattern that leads to definite outcomes that we call glory. Are we together now? Every possibility in the kingdom, listen carefully, every possibility in the kingdom is a product of understanding and working in keeping with certain spiritual patterns god does not leave the manifestation of the glory of god to guessing there are exact spiritual patterns that produce exact outcomes now when the believer is laced with all kinds and all levels of ignorance you will find out that number one your life will be bankrupt of glory or number two your life will produce dimensions of glory that are not predictable so you may stumble across certain results perhaps results that come from prophetic decrees so a decree is made over your life and that week becomes a week of favor and then it ceases because the real pattern that controls that outcome has not been grasped this is the product of this is the the the, the call for mastery 
Mastery brings you in a position where you no longer fear your results because you have studied the pattern that leads to that outcome. Are we together now? God is a God of pattern. When you go to meet a tailor, look up please, you meet a tailor, one who perhaps is responsible for your, your clothes, you show that tailor something that you want, no matter how complicated the design is. Sometimes you are even afraid whether the man can do it and he laughs. He says, I understand. He knows how to produce that result. Why? Because as complicated as that outcome is, there is a pattern. If you are not a tailor, it will remain a mystery. The assignment of the training school is to demystify that mystery. Are we together now? When you go and meet a medical doctor, especially a consultant, while you are describing your cases using all kinds of, uh, you know, limited expressions, all he's looking for are patterns because there are patterns that can reveal to him that this is this. Sometimes the patterns may require to take specimens and then to test further. But the whole idea is that through the power of patterns, many lives have been preserved, medically speaking. There is a pattern that leads to influence. There is a pattern that leads to working in the supernatural. There is a pattern, listen carefully, that makes you an exceptional leader. There is a pattern that leads to wealth and abundance, a pattern for speed, a pattern for deliverance. Your assignment as a believer is to remain ever open to bring together by the, the ministry of a teaching priest and in partnership with the spirit, Every service is supposed to be an exposition of spiritual patterns. So that if and when you have been around a house of God for a while, where the word of God is taught with, accurate, with accuracy, there you may not know everything, but at least we should see commendable results in your life by engaging patterns. Are we together? Now watch this. I'm holding a mic here and there is a system to put this mic on. When I push this down, then it comes back. I switched it off. Now, the, the mic does not care who manipulates it. The moment you engage the pattern that offs the power, it offs. Am I right on that? It does not ask you whether you are an American. It does not ask you whether you are Russian, whether you are European, whether you are Nigerian. If the mic is off, it is not because of any tribal sentiments. So you can hold this mic with such profound potential to amplify your voice and yet you may not be heard. And you see, it is dangerous to not produce results for a long time, I have taught you. Because your, the absence of your result produces another kind of theology. When, you, when someone has to learn God through the lens of your life, what part of God will be misrepresented? If someone has to use your life as the only template to learn God, if your life were the only Bible to be read, are we going to read John in your life? Are we going to read Proverbs in your life? For some of you, the only part in your life may be Ecclesiastes. You will rob us of knowing that there are other chapters. My assignment is to stretch you and to show you, listen, that you do not have to be afraid of results. Results are exact products of patterns. Are we together? Yes. Moses in Exodus chapter 33, Exodus chapter 33, we'll read verse 13, then we'll go to verse 18. Moses was crying unto God. Verse 18 was a cry to experience the glory of God. But most people do not know that the request started from verse 13. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, it says, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Do you know what he was saying? In other words, I, I need to lead these people properly, but the problem is my convictions and my personal results. And I know that the glory of God upon me would affect their loyalty. So show me your way. Now verse 18, 33 and verse 18. 
and he said i beseech thee show me your glory you will never experience the glory of god in any aspect of your life until you study carefully the spiritual pattern connected to that please i want you to follow carefully and believe what i'm telling you your life will remain an unending wonder once you master the patterns of the spirit so when the devil wants to rob you of the glory of god he does not fight the glory he fights your access to the patterns of the spirit are we together in john chapter 8 and verse 32 jesus now comes in the new testament and he's teaching us and he said ye shall know the truth he calls it the truth he says and the truth that you know shall make you free that the truth has liberating power in other words if you are bankrupt of the truth you can remain in bondage amplified says that that you shall be unquestionably free in certain renditions in john 17 17 john 17 17 it says sanctify them by your truth thy word is truth go back to kjv sanctify them through your truth he says thy word is truth so when the bible talks of truth he means access to the word of god ignorance is a very dangerous cancer worse than the medical diseases that plague people ignorance hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet was speaking by the spirit and lamenting said my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge it says because thou has rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou be no priest to me seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy god i will also forget thy children in Psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7, very popular scripture here. They know not, neither will they understand. It says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some of you, not the prophets among you, not the apostles among you. All of you are children of the most high. Verse 7 says, but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes ignorance is a dangerous cancer in this kingdom hallelujah in fact in luke chapter 11 i believe um, verse 35 it should be luke 11 give us 35 jesus said take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness do you know what he's saying that means you can carry a body of information it may even be spiritual truth and you hope that you are carrying the truth if it is the truth it has liberating power isn't it interesting that there are many believers who carry a backlog of all kinds of knowledge using all sorts of references but in the face of real life situation they are not able to produce victory if it does not produce victory it is not the truth the truth sustains the power to bring victory to the believer and let god be true and every man a liar are we still together it says take heed that what you call light that means i can carry a revelation and be shouting rema for years and yet your life does not capture the corresponding glory did you know i wish i had something a biro or a stick or something give me your drumstick my watch this ladies and gentlemen this is a drumstick Someone can deceive me into believing that this is a mic and I can sincerely believe that this is a mic. Am I right on that? Now, the problem is not my believing. The problem is that I believed a lie. So I can hold that mic confidently in front of you coming from many years of indoctrination. I have been taught that this is a mic. It's just that it was designed in a way that looks like a drumstick. So I can call the whole world and say, come and see how loud this mic can be. The only thing or the only issue here is that my believing was unto a lie. So he's saying, take heed so that what you have been calling Rema, take heed so that what you have been saying, this is revelation. 
does it stand the test of time and does it produce the character of glory many of us have been holding things that look like what we think they are but they really are not you've been holding a revelation that you believe this is the secret of prosperity but it's not showing in your life you have been holding a revelation that you believe this is the secret of longevity this is the secret of excellence listen if it does not produce the glory connected to it it is not that light it is not the truth are we together now so back to this example i'm holding a drumstick and now you imagine that i now add pride to this ignorance so that when you are lovingly coming to call me to say listen you've been holding this for five years but i want to with every sense of love let you know that this is not a mic this is a drumstick and i said no my mentor told me or a spirit told me that anything that looks like this with a pointed end is a mic what if he was wrong listen we are not discussing the subject of transformation but i was teaching our school of ministry students i think someone asked a question and i was teaching them that when you come to the school of transformation there are two dimensions to followership that leads to transformation just for your knowledge the first level is called follow them so god mandates that you follow human models are we together models whose lives have captured results enough to inspire you but the greater dimension is looking onto jesus that means you now come to the awareness that even the models as best as they are can be limited that they are also students in the school of the spirit they are just students that have had the privilege to go ahead of you so a time will come where both the lecturer and the student stand at a loss. It is only the God of heaven that can show mercy at that point. Are we together now? So that your followership may look like you are following a man, but that beyond that man, you are always verifying that that man is following the Christ. So in, in experience, you are not just looking on to men, you are looking on to Jesus. That's how you get holistically transformed. I can love you with all my heart and not mean to deceive you but i may have an accumulation of inaccurate or blatantly wrong knowledge and i may communicate that error to you with such passion and i hope not with pride and you receive it in honor to jesus and in honor to me as his servant except that when you act out that wrong information the corresponding glory that should follow does not follow are we together thank you now your rod is anointed <laughs> no 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 don't don't worship it hallelujah you know believers this is still part of the things i'm saying now somebody can go and hang put a rope on that thing now no it was just an example if we're together say amen, amen. so the bible gives us a word of caution and this is a message really to us all, but it extends to the body of Christ. It's important that in this season, we are careful and unashamed about examining that which we call light. Is it true light? I love the way the Bible puts it. It says that was the true light that lighted every man, meaning there are false lights. You don't have to be a wicked person to bring deception. You can be sincere, but the lights that you carry, the Bible says, the spirit speaketh expressly that some in the latter time shall depart from the faith. Is that in your Bible? It says they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. The person does not have to be demonized. The person does not have to be bad, but you can teach something that is inconsistent with the character of God. It will still bring destruction to God's people are we together my greatest if I have any fear at all in my life it is this that I do not examine my life at a point and find out that what I have been calling truth especially that which I've been proposing to God's people is now discovered that is a lie so I continue to examine myself even whilst I teach are we together now yes but I can tell you by the authority and integrity of scripture, forget about the manifestation of the glory of God in your life if you do not study the patterns of the kingdom. 
let's go to the kitchen now many of you do well in the kitchen you know how to cook all kinds of things continental dishes local dishes some of you are we together am i right on that and then some of you are so good that you know we call you chefs and all of that and like i've always told you when you meet somebody who is professional all you need to do is describe your end product tell them this is the picture of what I, I saw this can you produce this and they smile with the confidence of a good student and say get out of my kitchen give me time and sometimes what will tempt you back to the kitchen is the aroma that is a testament of mastery are we together now and now you are tempted to come back and say what in the world is going here and they tell you your meal is ready but imagine a very sincere relative a sincere brother maybe your husband who has who has not got the knowledge of these mysteries and these patterns in the kitchen even if he's an anointed person a, a, a preacher now you lock the person there are we together for instance me You know what I'm going to do? I will do what I know to do. Pray. I will pray first. Because the Bible says, any man afflicted, that thing there is not, that is not a test. That's a trial for me. Are we together? But the point is that there is no glory until there is an understanding of patterns. If you understand this, half of your issues are solved because all you need to do is write the various areas in your life where the glory of God has not yet been revealed and then you will take responsibility like a mature believer that you are or becoming are we together you now get back and say there has to be an explanation as to why in spite of the prayers and the prophetic decrees it looks like the curse is still at work in this family is it that God is powerless there has to be an answer do you know that there is nothing I know that pleases God like brokenness mixed with a sense of responsibility. Hallelujah. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 15. Here's what the Bible says. The labor of the foolish. The foolish here not being an insult is a description. Bankruptcy of knowledge. The labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them. That means there is no sparing, provided you are not interested in going for revelation to understand the patterns, the ways of God. He says it will weary every one of them because he knoweth not how to go into the city. Not because there is no city. Because he knoweth not how to go into the city now there are sincere men and women of god who love jesus with all their hearts but they have not learned the ancient patterns and the mysteries that make ministry work to command results with the dignity of kingdom integrity there are many people whose assignments are influence dependent and yet they do not know the patterns that can make a generation loyal to you it is dangerous to understand your assignment but not know and or have the tools that will help you to be effective are we together yes in this kingdom please write in this kingdom authentic results are built on the revelation of the ways of God in this kingdom authentic results are built on the revelation of the ways of God when you know the ways of God or you may call it the patterns the spiritual patterns that are allocated for the outcome you desire then you are ready to command authentic results that in this kingdom authentic results are built upon the revelation of the ways of God I wrote something down here that I want you to please listen to very carefully action in ignorance is not faith action in ignorance is not faith 
Respectfully speaking, there are many teachings on faith that just emphasize action. Action is the later part of faith. The foundation of Bible faith is revelation. Knowledge. If you act in ignorance, for instance, back to my mic example, let's assume that I'm now given the mandate to switch this mic on. I can play with it around, sincerely so. I can knock the mic, I can jump around it. I'm taking action, but it's in ignorance. None of those actions will bring it, will switch it on. So if I, before you take action, you must verify that you are acting with sufficient knowledge. Let me give you an example of what many people do in the body of Christ. Please look up. You can choose any issue of concern whatsoever and you can literally act out a variety of action steps that the average believer would take. For instance, let's use a general example. A person or a family that is going through very tough financial seasons, you can honestly ask them, not for mockery, but just to help. So what have you done about this situation? The first thing they will tell you is, I've done everything I know how to do. And that's the truth. But what did you do? They will say, I prayed. They will say, I fasted. Not wrong. But the patterns that produce lasting wealth in the economy of the kingdom is not just dependent on these two. Are we together now? And you tell them, what else? They say, I begged an uncle, a wicked man who has all the money to solve this, my problem, he did not give me. What else did you do? I said I would try one business or the other and it still did not work. Now, mark this student in light of the knowledge you know now. This student will barely pass that exam. Because although there is a lot of dissipation of physical and emotional energy, the truth is that he's acting in defiance with the authentic patterns that make the blessing manifest even financially. So if you want to help this man, the key is not just to give him capital to go and start business. You've only recycled another pain. Are we together now? If you really want to help this man, you have to go back to Isaiah 61 to preach the gospel to the poor. It will look like an insult. Does the poor need help or need preaching? So you now begin to give this person a new orientation. Hallelujah. A family that has been bankrupt of victory in terms of, you know, their spiritual liberty. Everyone in that family tied down by curses and yokes. You ask them, what have you done about it? Sincerely, they will most likely answer this way. I've gone to every prayer house. They will even list it. I've met this man of God. In fact, here is the photo. He snapped with me to tell you that I, I, I really met him. So why has the situation not changed? Do I know? How do you help this man now? Every time he or she is studying their Bible, they will find it written here that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And their experience cannot change this reality. No. Let God be true and every man a liar. So for that person, the moment you find out you've done all you know to do and your situation does not change, it's time to start re-examining the patterns upon which your actions are based. Are we together? I hear that there's a, there's a popular saying that doing the exact same thing and, ex, ex, and expecting another kind of result is one definition of insanity. I think I agree. When your actions do not lead to the results, it is not just a faith problem. It is a knowledge problem. You are acting on wrong or inaccurate information. Faith in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. Please write it down. Faith in ignorance, underline the word ignorance. Faith in ignorance is not faith and will, I mean action, my apologies. Action in ignorance, action in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. Action in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. That means the first assignment of any believer seeking to produce results 
is knowledge revelation not action the first assignment of any believer seeking to produce results is knowledge revelation knowledge what kind of knowledge a thorough understanding i wrote here of the patterns allocated for the specific spiritual outcomes a thorough understanding of the patterns a thorough understanding of the patterns allocated for specific spiritual outcomes once upon a time in my life I didn't walk in this level of spiritual power why because the level of spiritual understanding that sponsors this power I have taught you here please look up when you read the book of revelations the Bible says worthy is the lamb that was slain and all of that uh, or he said weak not for the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David has prevailed he's worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll and then he said I looked at the throne and I saw a lamb as though had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes notice seven horns and seven eyes the eyes there talks of revelation the horns there talk of authority so for every horn there is an eye connected to it seven horns seven eyes if you have only two eyes two dimensions of revelation you will only have the corresponding authority that matches your level of revelation seven horns seven eyes seven horns seven eyes hallelujah leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 the lord was speaking to moses commanding him now he says this is the thing which the lord commanded that ye should do he says and the glory of the lord shall appear unto you in genuine pursuit for spiritual power i began to explore the materials of people that i thought i saw the workings of the spirit in their lives to a very commendable degree and i started searching reading through their books and reading through their stories all that i was looking for were patterns listen every time you study the lives or the works of great people don't just be carried away by the parables and the stories and the similitudes make sure you are sensitive enough to deduce patterns the power is not in the story the power is not in the parable that's why jesus would give parables but hidden within those parables were patterns those who heard it just went back nodding their heads they had been enlightened in terms of you know from a, a, a literary standpoint but the disciples will come and say what is the hidden meaning of this and jesus will begin to explain the sower is this the seed is the word of god and so on and so forth you have not really benefited from any material until you deduce from that material the pattern connected to the glory let me repeat myself again that you have not been blessed by any material until you can deduce from that life or that material the pattern that reveals that glory i remember years ago watching benny Hinn minister and such display of the glory of god upon his life miracles signs and wonders i would watch reinhard bonke of blessed memory i would watch um Billy Graham minister in his crusades and he would just come up the stage just casually and for the next one hour you were spellbound by the level of intellectual acumen the intelligence the his presentation of the gospel was so compelling you would watch the people and, and those days at, at, at least as far as I watch you didn't have instruments playing like you know the Pentecostal charismatic circles would do there would be pin drop silence and while he's talking you would almost think the people were ignoring him until he made the altar call you would see people get up just walk like something was pushing them i said what kind of grace is this he did not seem to perform many miracles as i know and as i saw but my goodness the compelling power of the gospel and i said i desire this grace show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest 
Will you show us the ancient path? Lead us along eternal highway. We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter I saw great fathers like Kenneth Copeland or our Roberts. They spoke about the healing power of God and they spoke about his ability to prosper a man, to match the wealth of nations. It looked like they were joking except that their lives proved it. You study the story of Aura Roberts, now the university stands as a monument, an eternal signature that a man of faith walked upon the earth. You would watch his crusades where he would lay hands upon thousands of people and you would record miracles as though they were stage managing it. I said, no, this glory must have a pattern behind it. Don't just admire the possibilities that come from the life of a believer. You must reach back and find out what spiritual pattern has been found. I watch men like R.W. Shambach. These were men who walked mysteriously in dimensions of power. You study their videos and their materials, you would see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. In his popular words, he would shout and say, don't touch that dial. And the miracles, the manifestations, you will hear of fingers that were amputated, growing back. Do I talk of Charles and Francis Hunter? Men who trivialized the healing. They, they brought mastery to the healing ministry. They brought, they brought a scientific component to healing. They would teach a particular dimension of healing and line up the people who had that case. Literally pulling people out of wheelchairs like child's play. The things that are written aforetime, time, the Bible says they are written for our learning. I watched Benny Hinn pile up stadiums, pile up auditoriums in the name of the Lord. If you heard that Benny Hinn was coming to your area or Reinhard Bonke, I had the privilege to be in at least one or two of his meetings. And his last and final and arguably about his largest meeting that happened in Lagos. I mean, you, I watched Benny Hinn. My dad those days used to get, you know, the, 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 the cassettes of his crusades. It was from him that I saw that evangelism by fire. That fire would come upon something and consume it physically without you setting it up. Ah! These were not things I was told. I had the privilege to be in at least one of his major crusades. I saw a display of the power of God from that man almost like he was doing nothing. And yet I watched, respectfully speaking, other people and you would see the energy being dissipated, begging God to move. The moment the axe head is blunt, be ready to dissipate energy without results. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then do I talk of our own patriarchs in this nation? Men like Apostle Babalola. You read about these people. You will think they were exaggerations. These were carriers of potent glory and power. Did not have the best of secular enlightenment and education. But my goodness. These men in their, in their wild quest for God. They stumbled not everything. But what they caught. They really caught. Hallelujah. I study a lot on the history of the church of, of God in Nigeria, you know, generally. And I mean, some of these men, some of the prophets past that have joined the cloud of witnesses, you step within their vicinity and they x-ray you. Men who laid hold on eternal life. Dimensions of the spirit. Hallelujah. You would go to their crusade grounds and you would marvel at the manifestation of the hand of God. That if they told you that these men were once alive, you would think they were parables. Can I tell you, every dimension of glory that seems missing in the body of Christ is not missing. Because the glory is a reaction. It is that we need to trust God for grace to find the patterns. There are patterns. 
Can a man prosper with the dignity of kingdom integrity? Yes. But have we not tried and tried and tried and it did not work? And you know, we have, respectfully speaking, anybody who catches whatever small, at least they share the little that they know. But let me tell you, there has to be a higher dimension of revelation, a body of truth that is now organized. Are we together? Many people have done it in the personal development industry. Many have done it in the secular. We have books. They have been able to use statistics to study success. Different dimensions of success. In fact, just to talk a bit on that. When you, when you study the story, many of you would know him now. In, um, as we know in the business world or in the world of leadership generally. You hear about a mysterious name called Napoleon Hill. That man was a prodigy of Andrew Carnegie and Andrew Carnegie together with some of the world's successful people at that time Andrew Carnegie called him history would tell us and told him that there are many people dying the wealthy people were dying with fire in their bones and not sharing their secrets and nobody has been able to compress the things that they knew that brought their results and he mandated Napoleon Hill what the book that you know you know, some of his books and materials where they were the end product of his personal research. He was given letters of introduction to go to everybody in the then world who had attained a commendable level of success and to interview them then to piece together the principles that produce an excelling life. That's what brought books like Think and Grow Rich and a number of his other books that today have built many conglomerates across the globe. There is no respectable leadership institute, financial institution that does not pay honor and respect to these materials. And a few people like Robert Lerder now alive and other great people, they, they, they were able to piece together a number of their materials. But I submit to you, the body of Christ needs to come to a higher level. We need to be able to distill these factors with precision and add intelligence to it. If we intend for these dimensions of possibilities to be widespread across the body, it does not have to be shielded like a cult. What does it take to live a long life? What does it take to be prosperous? What does it take to dislodge the entities of darkness that, try the, that tie the destinies of men down? What does it take to rise to a position of influence? This is why the Lord gave us teaching priests according to Jeremiah 3 and verse 15. That I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart. That they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Are we together? Yes. So taking actions in ignorance will not produce the outcomes that we desire. I've had the honor of meeting a few great people, extremely great people, especially in ministry and in the supernatural. And where I have the opportunity to probe into their results, I just ask them politely, could you share with me? What did God show you? Others just say generally, they may just say the grace of God or the mercy of God. But sometimes you need to respectfully probe into the dynamics. What is it that you always do that makes God show up when you call him? What is it that makes that help is always at the corridors of your life that you never seem to lack help, both material and human? Did you not know, ladies and gentlemen, that there are patterns connected to this thing? What pattern was Noah given that made the animals to leave the bush and with orderliness, they started walking their way to the ark? If you know that pattern, it would draw customers to your shop. If you know that pattern, it will draw members to your church. Noah did not imagine Noah going through the burden of shouting around. No. Every manifestation of the glory, let me repeat, has a spiritual pattern connected to it. You can jump, you can shout, but if it's not the pattern, you will not see the glory. Hallelujah. 
I remember when I began to see the healing anointing walking in my life. It was almost like magic. In fact, quite frankly, I thought the people who were testifying were just doing it because they didn't want me to feel bad. Maybe they were tired and they appreciated my labor and wanted to console me by saying they were fine. And even as it is now, we are still toddlers relative to the dimension that God intends we step into. Who is like him, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne. Mountains bow down, every ocean roar, to the king of kings. We will praise Adonai, from the rising of the sun, Till the end of every day, praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth, all the elders and the saints, sing praise. Men will sing that song because of your life. That you, you will be a man, the walking glory of God. That when people want to learn God, they say, look what God has done with a life such a manifestation not not onto competition listen look god can walk through a man that that man becomes a salmon that as a man of god if you are looking for a salmon god brings the image of that man and a topic comes out from any aspect of his life i and the children that the lord has given me he says we are for signs he didn't say we will produce signs that we become men to be wondered at like the bible says that people will say how what did god do with a man to produce these kinds of results let your light so shine it says before men this is one of the things that we hope that god will do through our lives this week in uk my goodness it will be it will be a dramatic manifestation of the grace and the power of god we say it because our confidence, our sufficiency is not in ourselves. But I've told you, if you found a pattern, it will work anywhere. Hmm. Listen, a chef will do well in Abuja. He will do well in a kitchen in Florida. He will do well somewhere in the Caribbean. It does not matter. The location regardless once there is an opportunity to live out the pattern the healing anointing will work in nigeria it will work in us it will work in uk it will work in the middle east the name of the lord that you know and know how to use it will work in nigeria it will work everywhere elijah could stand upon the confidence of these patterns and he said send a man to me and let him know there is a prophet in israel how could a man speak like that it was the same elijah who said cry unto Baal. have you forgotten the pattern to call down fire listen the men in the bible that you call supernatural were simply custodians of patterns it looked like they were custodians of power but i am telling you the power resides in the patterns it is more sustainable to be a custodian of patterns than a custodian of power you can get power through impartation you don't get patterns through impartation patterns come as a product of revelation but when you find it Listen, the men that we think in the body of Christ are arrogant. They are not arrogant. It is the intoxicating power when you find patterns. So fathers like Bishop Oyedeko would tell you that they rolled and say, yeah, I can never be poor again. And you see, people can misunderstand them, but it is the truth. Our father in the Lord, Baba Deboy, will say, God told me there is someone here that in two weeks your life will change and you hear people shouting amen he is not just speaking english he's speaking on the strength of patterns elisha said by this time tomorrow
when your life becomes a sign and a wonder it becomes an epistle this is the point the results that emanate from your life should not create competition or to look down on people demean and downplay people no you would have lost the purpose is supposed to compel people that someone who is lazy with his prayer life by the time he sees certain dimensions of possibilities through your life it will activate that fire again hallelujah every time i watch this man this is what happened to me i said there has to be something ben hin would sing songs like for you are glorious and worthy to be praised you're the lamb upon the throne and on to you we lift our voice in praise you're the lamb upon the throne and then you will see manifestations of the spirit amazing things I watch the videos of this man and, and in my spirit my cry was oh God revive us again when the devil wants a generation to lose the glory of God all he needs to do is to look for the few people who have the patterns left and kill them or make the territory persecute them and through that act of dishonor they close the door for continuity Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us. You've heard my story. I told you that one time I was listening to Pat Robinson, the founder of CBN 700 Club, and very gentle but powerful man of God. I mean, they had a widespread grace for the word of knowledge in that ministry. Almost every one of the staff that I know, you know, operates in that grace. And one day I heard the man speaking and he said as a young minister when he was about to start ministry, that he prayed and he cried that God will give him three things. Number one, if I recall, he prayed that God will give him wisdom. Number two, he prayed that God will grant him favor. Number three, he prayed that God will grant him the anointing of the spirit. I said, this is it. I can see the glory in your life that reflects that those patterns have been kept. I went back in the place of prayer. And many other instances happened. I prayed for favor for one month. It was a February of that year. From start to finish. I said, Lord, this is not something that came by default. But I have studied from the end of my destiny. You have shown me. And as far as I saw at the time, I said, if I did not have the favor of God working in my life, I may not be able to do my assignment effectively. And I went to study the patterns that command favor. When I found it, I said, this is it. Nothing showed at that time that it was found. But hallelujah to Jesus, when you find it, it speaks. Man of God, listen to me. Probably your prayer group or your ministry somewhere right now is struggling in a particular area. This message is an assignment, it's a call to go back. Listen. Do you know, believers study, but we don't study patterns. We don't even know what we are looking for. So we don't even know when we found it. We just study and say, wow, anything that excites us. No, you don't do that. You isolate an area where you need to see the glory of God manifest. Then for starters, you pray for guidance in the, in the spirit. And then you search for men and women who exemplify that dimension. And now, don't just get excited by the results. Here is what most people do. They hang around people with results and think hanging around is what produces the results. You see that now? Just because you snap with an anointed man does not make you anointed. 
you only implicate yourself for your destruction because you will now be elevated to platforms you don't have the grace to defend and with shame you will be reduced back to where you rightfully belong whenever you have access to men who have this result your proximity should be an opportunity to do whatever it is scripturally within your means to get them to open you up to the patterns listen when god gives you unusual access to great people you would be unwise if all you do is celebrate the leverage it is no leverage until the patterns are revealed to you learn this many of you have served great men of god many of you have served billionaires many of you served senators and all you have are their photos all you have are physical gifts they gave you you didn't do well sir what took you from a local government chairman to a senator that regardless the antagonisms and without bribing you still remain show me a pattern and the man will tell you it started from my grandmother one day i took a cup of water to mama and she said kneel down she said i did not do well but i lay my hands upon you and i elevate you to be higher than me oh that is it see let me repeat it one more time please listen to me results do not happen by luck results are exact engagings or engagements of patterns the purpose of scripture is that you have access to these patterns scattered through scripture are patterns that correspond to various dimensions of the glory of god if you have found some Others have found quite some. But God is still counting on many who will find all. For instance, raising the dead is still a mystery across the body of Christ. Do you know that I believe that there are times we will find these patterns and it will become as frequent as healing headaches? Is that true? now you see sicknesses and diseases as much as we desire with all our hearts to see people healed it grieves my heart when i see people who were prayed for and did not get the kind of healing they desired but th there were times in the bible when the bible would say jesus healed them all the disciples thought it was just by laying on of hands they went to drag that epileptic patient you remember and they embarrassed themselves there nothing happened and they came to jesus they said listen we're frustrated why couldn't this happen and Jesus told them, because of your own belief, this kind goeth not, but by this and that and that. And Peter kept following. A time came when the shadow of Peter. You can see growth, measurable growth. The Bible says God wrought special miracles, Act 19, Acts chapter 19, by the hands of Paul, so that handkerchiefs and aprons that were taken from him were put upon the sick. Come on now. The ways of God is the secret that this generation needs. Listen, we have had sermons, wonderful sermons, commendably so. We have heard songs. We have heard recitations. But it's time for a, a, a manifestation, an accurate communication of provable patterns. Patterns whose glory you can relate with so that we don't build on rubbles and shadows celebrating supposed remas that don't seem to have corresponding levels of glory because hear me the world that is coming in the next 10 years is not this world that you know it will be a world of precision and proofs let me repeat to you prophetically that the world that is that our civilization is evolving into are you seeing the level of accuracy that science is attaining onto with the manifestation of AI right now and all of these things, there is exactitude and precision. Even in medicine, except the church. Listen, revival is threefold. Number one, the individual. Number two, the body of Christ. Then number three, territories. We are still in phase one, where God is bringing an awakening to individuals. Because that's the pattern we see in the life of Gideon. The first thing that happened was a personal revival for Gideon. The Gideon pattern now. 
Then after Gideon was walked upon, he said, now go in this thy might. Gideon blew a trumpet and 33,000 of his men now came. And even among them, there was a pruning until they were left 300. And it was with those they went and defeated the Midianites. So the first thing God is doing is personal awakenings and revivals. Planting a hunger in people, young and old, from every nation and every territory. And what a joy God has mandated Africa and even Nigeria. Every continent has sounded their shofar. We're about to hear the shofar that comes from Nigeria. And my goodness, and Africa, it will be loud and clear. We may not export oil, we may not export other technological products, but we are exporting the spirit with power, with proof. We are exporting superior dimensions of the spirit. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. It is only a revived man that can cause revival. It is only a transformed man that can bring transformation. It says, such as I have, give I. So when we talk about awakenings and revivals, many of us are just thinking going to the nations. No, you go to the nations without miracle working power. You go to the nations broke and hungry and tired. No, allow that which you want to import to work in your life first. Then you will come with confidence. 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 The things we have seen, the things we have heard, it says that which our hands have handled even of the word of life that is what we preach now you can stand and tell a generation we have not brought you cunningly devised fables listen we're about to pray i want to ask you a few questions question one is it true that god walks through men don't just answer think about it can the God of the universe actually hold the hands of a mortal man and walk with that man? I was speaking some time ago with a consultant who was telling me, please sit down. The consultant was telling me some of the advancements that have happened in medicine. And based on what he told me, here's what he said, that right now, using the power of the internet, a doctor from somewhere can actually be performing surgical procedures without being there physically using the power of robotics and all of that you know i said wow that just reminded me that the god of heaven can find expression through the hands of mortal men so you see possibilities that are beyond the man and you know that there must be a mighty god producing this i ask you again is it true that the god of the heavens whom the heavens cannot even contain that he can literally live speak and walk through men do you believe it is possible yes. question two do you believe it can happen with you yes. that these hands can literally the hand of Jehovah can rest upon an ordinary man's hand and you will command possibilities that these lips of clay as frail as they are his majesty can echo his voice and everyone in Zion can hear and know that he's the one speaking I'm asking you a question do you believe 
He said, great is the mystery of godliness that God can become a man. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a revelation that the fathers caught. Today, it is a theological debate in the church. Was never meant to be so. Is it true that God can live through men and manifest provable possibilities in their lives? How do you keep speaking and people are shouting up and down? Are you a herbalist? By what mechanism? My strings man is not here. tonight is that you leave the realm of shadow boxing there is a higher dimension in the spirit a dimension where all of you becomes a mysterious manifestation an unfolding of this glory that Shekinah glory through your life possibilities that cause men to wonder and you see every time men look at you and they think you are so great then you remind them that we are only ordinary men defended by the jealousy of a great god that he stands behind us as a mighty terrible one this is what is making you become a mystery to many a sermon to many a challenge to others that your life becomes an effulgence did we not read about this man in the Bible did they not carry the power of God from nation to nation it's not by empty grammar and speaking no we bring the possibilities of the kingdom provable realities demonstrating the ministry of the Spirit here and now oh it's time to rise it's time to rise it's time to shake that shake that all you shake that all you shake the powerless you shake the canal you shake the flesh you shake the sense driven you rise to the realm of the spiritual hallelujah i want you to sing for me a song The atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord One more time. is here 
at me lift your hands I saw fire coming upon you that man I stretch my hands upon you in the name of Jesus you are drinking of the wine of the spirit let it open you to a new face a new face take that grace now in the name of Jesus Christ what does it take to walk in the power of God? What does it take to be a conduit releasing the possibilities of the spirit to the nations? What does it take to bring the counsel of Jesus to the nations? What does it take to be an epitome of the blessing of the Lord? What does it take to find favor with God and with men? The answers to these and more are shrouded in this mystery called the way of God he can show men his ways we can feast on the patterns of the spirit and with them manifest wonders in this life prayer point number one father open my eyes open my eyes open my eyes someone cry to your maker shake it take it take it take it take open my eyes he said call unto me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things zaria are you praying abuja are you praying koinonia global cry you may be a man of god an apostle a prophet an evangelist hear me we are in the days of his power there is a mighty awakening across the nations of the earth Open my eyes. Show me the keys to kingdom wealth and prosperity. Open my eyes. Show me the keys to operating the healing anointing. Open my eyes. Show me the keys to restoration. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your spirit I will rise from the ashes. Hear me. Listen. I ask you the first question. That is it true that God can come to indwell men? Question two. Do you believe that the anointing of the Spirit upon a man can cause you to operate and manifest dimensions of possibilities that are not given to mortal men that this engracing we call the anointing it says i have found my servant david psalm 89 and verse 20 that with my holy oil have i anointed him i've anointed him whom my hand will lift are we together now 21 it says that the enemy shall not exert upon him Verse 23, it says, I will afflict, I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. The last verse, it says, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn, his horn is his authority, his influence, his relevance shall be exalted. That's why I raised that song. In your name I come alive to declare your victory 
The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Hear me? You see, the thing about the dealings of God with men, please listen carefully. The thing about the dealings of God with men is that at any level you can start with God. And I'm not just talking of new birth at any level spiritually, but the first law of transformation is that you must admit the limitations of your current state. In pride, transformation is an impossibility. You have to first acknowledge that I am limited. May be a man of God, may be a businessman, but my current frame of reference is not, pro is not producing the possibilities. Then God can come to you with his mercy. When I cry to God, I cry as though I have not known him. I cry as if I do not know anything about the anointing. I am amazed at our arrogance in the body of Christ over the little that we see. Whereas there are virgin dimensions in the spirit to explore. The current context of our definition of strength cannot host the revival coming. It will take superior manifestations of the power of God. If it is the nations we want to take. Uh -uh. We must quit this blind arrogance and begin to pursue with sincerity. We have tried, but not enough. The current idea of what we call strength and power and results in the body of Christ, I submit to you, it is not notable enough to compel the nations. It says where the carcasses are. Do you know what it means to make diplomats, to make nations, to make kings? To make people from the Middle East, you know what it takes to turn their attention from their busy schedules to look at Jesus? It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you. Listen, with all due respect, we're about to pray. We talk a lot about prosperity in the body of Christ and I respect all that God has done. But how many of us can give to nations and still be able to sleep sound? We are not there yet. Let us be sincere with ourselves. Being blessed enough for yourself is not really the blessing. Until you can give to the kingdom, in a notable way as though it's a government giving and it does not affect you you are not yet there the ones who are there are lots of unbelievers commendably there but the church needs to rise look at the way we beg for money we manipulate for money it's unnecessary we must contend for superior levels many years ago the lord revealed to me that there are seven dimensions of kingdom wealth that he was bringing to the body of Christ and at the time he revealed to me he told me we were only on level three three you will see men who will stand like nations whose lives will be a mystery economically when they speak it will be a combined echo of the spirit and resources and some of you this is what God is preparing you to become but this version of you cannot host that glory no not with your life still mad with a lot of carnality and greed and just wanting cars and houses no the kind of end time wealth we are talking about is beyond i'm wearing a rolex i'm wearing this i'm wearing designers that's wonderful but we are talking about nations saved in one day using the resources of the kingdom how about evangelists and pastors we preach for hours and only two souls will come out. That is wonderful, but it's too slow. In, in the world today, on average, I, I, the last I checked, and I've shared it here, the statistics shows that the Christian faith only accounts for about 2.6 billion people out of the over 8 billion people now on earth. That is too small and is too slow. If it takes 100 years or 200 years to win 2.6 billion people, <laughs> then it means we are doing a bad job. Minus those who die, minus those who are born, and the 2.6 includes backsliders on serious Christians mixed together. 
and yet he wants the gospel to reach all the 8 billion there must be an accelerator factor how are we going to get to the remaining over 5.4 billion who must hear about Jesus ladies and gentlemen provided we are still fighting one another I am for Paul and Apollos all that is a demonic distraction to waste our time because none of us I have taught here sustains the ability to host the global harvest. I say it respectfully to the body of Christ. Any individuals who believe either as an individual or as a group or as a ministry, as a church, we can only do our best. It is only in unity that that mission will happen. In this unity, our inefficiencies laced with pride will become glaring and it will become the biggest impedance to our making that progress, even more than demon spirits. We must come to a place of respectful admission that our individual efforts can only go so far. It is the collective effort of the church, the ecclesia, that church from Asia to America, to the Caribbeans, to the Middle East, to Africa, to Europe, together as a united body. And unity does not mean uniformity. We don't have to do the same thing. We must just be guided by one cause. That when the trumpet is blown in Zion, everybody can hear and everybody can take their battle formation, acting according and within the measure of the grace allotted. This is what God calls for. Again, I will refer you to my message, Redefining Revival. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. I really believe in what God is doing. But I submit to you, our current result cannot host the new that is coming. The Bible says you cannot put new wine. You know what Jesus was talking about? That you cannot put new wine where? In an old wine skin. That means every... He said... And he, tell, he tells us why. That if you put new wine in an old wine skin, it is going to tear it. So every time God wants to tear the old wine skin, he puts a bit of the new wine so that the old will tear and give room for a complete vessel. If you want the new wine, what's that song? Where there is new wine, there is new power. Sing it for me. I lay down my own to carry on you Hear me. The old you cannot carry this new that is coming. The old businessman cannot carry the apostolic order of prosperity that is coming. The greedy you cannot carry it the stingy you the competitive you cannot carry this dimension of anointing because there is a requisite level of compassion you must have to be trusted with the grace that heals nations are we together yes that leads me to the next prayer point no eye has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. Here's the prayer. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. Are you ready to pray this second prayer lord the circumcision that must happen to me to be able to host the new that you are bringing that circumcision of the flesh that circumcision in my heart lord let it happen expand me everything that needs to be done in my life to carry these superior levels of grace prosperity wisdom influence access let it happen someone is praying You are a kingdom financier, pray. It is not just give me, give me, give me. Your first prayer is make me. 
make me before give me don't just pray and say give me billions no this version of you will be an ineffective and inefficient steward walk upon my heart so that my hands will be faithful walk upon my heart so that my bank account will be faithful walk upon my heart so that my sermons will be accurate walk upon my heart so that the results will be authentic in the name of jesus in the name of jesus listen all through this week don't just follow the conference in the uk as wonderful as that is people are connecting from all over the world i was sharing with the workers having a meeting with them and i was telling them in my mind and based on what i know god is doing now it is not a uk conference uk is just the venue for the conference this is a global conference that is making a major contribution to shift a season and bring God's people, particularly the people within the, Euro, the, the, the region of, of Europe and the UK, into an experience. It's a baptism that God is bringing his people into. So let me encourage you, let this week be for you a week of spiritual emphasis. Don't just be a fan, I'm watching, I'm wow, see the miracles happening. But let it be a cry. Let deep call on to deep. Some of you may need to go and carry the notebooks that you used to write things with you and God many years ago. Write it. Use those notebooks for this conference. And let there be a cry from your spirit. Lord, my members have been stunted because of my spiritual life. It's time to rise to a new dimension for their sake. There are dimensions in the spirit levels of power grace influence capacity to speak his purposes to the nations this is what you should do this week but for now and for tonight if you are here and you know that the way your life is please listen that you cannot be a worthy tool for his majesty because you have never genuinely made this conscious decision for Jesus. Maybe you've come around church. Maybe you were even a pastor's child or a pastor yourself. I'm not asking you what you do spiritually. I'm not asking you how many people you've healed. I'm not asking you how many people you've prophesied upon. I'm asking about your relationship with Jesus. And hear me, ladies and gentlemen. One of my precious people, as they came to lead the prayers, they spoke about massive salvation of souls. It is important that we lead people to Jesus because every man is only a conduit. The end of all this pursuit, from beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. That's what it's about. That is, it may start from us, but the end is Jesus. Tonight is a very special altar call as we step into this phenomenal week. And I'm going to make this call and ask you to run like there's fire on the mountain. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, I need to make it right. Start this conference with me, not just those in the UK. I need to iron it out, flog it with destiny and hand my life over to Jesus consciously. For those who will summon the courage, the courage that defies ego, the courage that defies who is seeing me, I salute you in advance and I want you to leave your seat as I begin to count one to five. I want you to rush and come and stand here right now. Those outside, all the overflows down to the basement, our family in Zaria and those who are connecting across the globe, I begin my counting now. Leave your seat and run to Jesus. One. Two, Koinonia, are you celebrating them as they come? I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. Keep coming. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. of me whatever you ask come come to Jesus come to Jesus he alone is able to give you a new beginning
the Bible calls him the way, the truth, and the life. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. You may never understand the joy that is in the heart of the Father and of Jesus himself when many come and stand before the cross crying in genuine repentance. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, Jesus told Nicodemus, he cannot enter the kingdom. He said that which is spirit is spirit and that which is flesh is flesh. For God so loved the world, the Bible declares, that he gave his then only begotten son, that whosoever believes on him, the Bible declares, shall not perish, but have life everlasting. The next verse says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. There is no other name, the Bible says, given among men under heaven by which we must be saved. And it assures us that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, the same shall be saved. Now you have come. I salute your courage. It took the Spirit of God for you to come here. And we love you as a family of faith. And for all those who are watching by television, watching through the internet, here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. As I lead these precious ones in prayer, I'd like you to participate fully, knowing that Jesus is right there with you. Lift your right hand for those of you who are in front here and all the overflows. Please follow same. Say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now. I receive Jesus into my life as my Savior, as my King, and as my Lord. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I declare that I'm a child of God. I go from glory to glory. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for receiving this once. The Bible declares that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. They've made declarations of faith and according to the integrity of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. And in the name of Jesus from tonight, I declare and I commend you to the ministry of the word. And of the Holy Spirit there are two of you I just saw the power of God coming on that light there is something God is removing out of your life I rebuke that devil let them go now in the name of Jesus be blessed in Jesus mighty name we pray now I want you to look please to your left which will be my right there are counselors waving the placard I'd like you to please politely walk to their direction they will have a word with you very quickly and then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Is this the best you can do? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please listen carefully. So whilst they're on their way uh, to meet the counselors, let me announce one last time that this finally is the week for our UK conference. <laughs> Hallelujah. The sound of revival. It starts on Wednesday and then Thursday. We have three sessions in all. Wednesday evening, Thursday morning, and um, the final session. All the days are miracle services, so we're trusting God for the manifestation of the gospel teachings for transformation and a mighty outpouring of the spirit um, let me just use a minute to respond we've gotten literally without exaggeration tens and even hundreds of calls from people who 
I have tried and tried. We've, the, we've packed up the registrations. Honestly, we're doing our best. You know, um, these facilities have laws. They have rules. It's a 21,000 capacity um, theater or auditorium. But of course, they're not part of it will be used sliced out for the venue and the rest so um we've exhausted i think when we got to 17 or so thousand couldn't take some more people again so we're doing our best to see if a certain windows can be open please you don't have to harass any of our officials just be patient and um keep watch we'll also walk away to see if there can be real-time registrations on site um uh, so that those who come and are not registered, just be patient. We hope that we'll be able to find a way of admitting you in. And then take note of our lines. We have our official uh, protocol and PR lines for the conference. Do take note of it. It's, it's on the, the bill there so that you can reach them. And, um, and then we have so many people coming. Please let me announce. We all know everybody but particularly for persons who are deserving of honor please let us know it's a foreign land for us so we need a lot of help make sure you do reach our protocol so that we'll be able to um, accord the honor that is needed thank all the pastors and all that have contributed immensely to making this conference a success we're really grateful and we've prayed already for the team leaving from here and all who are coming from across the globe and remember it's a global conference so so that seed is going to be on all our social media platforms all the sessions will be broadcast live and um, for a few places or the number of places across the globe that are having viewing centers please make sure that you avail it for the edification of god's people and um, make sure that you connect and get others to connect online so that we can experience the power the glory of jesus and we trust god that by weekend we'll be singing songs of victory and we'll return back rejoicing haven't done much for jesus if you believe that shout a loud amen, amen. praise the lord let me speak over your life as we wrap up the service in the name of jesus the son of the living god i decree and declare that you return next week a sign and a wonder this week beginning i declare over your life that every mountain and every challenge that has stood before you every issue of concern that you came here with in the name of jesus that mountain falls like dagon before the ark all those who are traveling to various locations this week we declare your journey is blessed you are blessed in your office. You are blessed in the place of assignment. Your families are blessed. Our children here in this ministry are blessed. In the name of Jesus. As a nation, we confer the blessing of the Lord upon this nation. And we declare no bad news. No evil report. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to share the grace afterwards. Please hug and greet someone generously as you walk out of the auditorium in the name of Jesus. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you next week.